Welcome to part one of the Big Easy Crochet Pullover Crochet Along sponsored by Yarnspirations. My name is Brittany and I'll be your guide throughout this project. Learning to crochet garments was a big leap for me, but also one of the most gratifying experiences. If you've never made a sweater before, this is the perfect place to start. The free pattern can be downloaded from yarnspirations.com and you can find the link to that right here in the top right corner of your screen. We'll break this project down into three easy parts over the next six days. We'll start with part one today, part two on Wednesday, and part three on Saturday. You can find all other details at behookedcrochet.com slash big easy pullover. All right, let's dive into part one of our sweater. We're gonna begin our sweaters with the ribbing on the back and the front. There's actually a section of the front and back that are exactly the same. So we're gonna cover that here. What we wanna do is start with the ribbing and this is worked in a long separate section. We're gonna start with a slip knot, place that on our hook and go ahead and chain 12. Once you have your 12 chains, we're gonna find the second chain from the hook. So we've got our first one here, and then our second one. You can work in the side loop in the back bump if you'd prefer. I'm gonna work in the back bump though. I think it gives you a nicer, a little bit more of a stretchy edge too, which is important for this ribbing. We're gonna single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each remaining chain. So just locate your next bump there or your next loop, whatever you're working into and single crochet. Once you've worked a single crochet into every chain, your work looks like this, and we'll have a total of 11 single crochets that we can count. That's the target here. We're gonna start the next row with a chain one, and then you'll turn your work. And for the remainder of the ribbing, actually what creates the ribbing texture is working in the back loop only. So when we look at it this way, we can see the V, and we have the loop that's in, in front because it's the one that's close to us and then we have the loop that's in the back because it's further away from us. Well, we're gonna work in that back loop only. So what I like to do to make my life a little bit easier, when I'm working with single crochets, I don't really like to work in the chain. So I never count that as a stitch when I'm working with single crochet. The pattern doesn't specify either way and so I would recommend finding the first stitch. So right here is my chain. You can see this V right here, that's the chain. The first stitch is right next to that. I'm gonna insert my hook into the back loop and make a single crochet. So that's stitch number one. We're gonna have a total of 11 stitches in our row and we're just going to continue working one single crochet through the back loop of every stitch until we get to the end of the row. Now since we worked our first single crochet in that first stitch, technically that means we did not count that chain one as a stitch. And so the last V that we'll see at the end of the row, that's going to be our last stitch that we need to work. And you can verify that by counting your stitches. We'll have a total of 11 single crochets starting at the beginning here to the end. You should have 11. Now that's the pattern repeat for the ribbing. We're just going to continue the next row with the chain one, turn our work, and then find the very next stitch that's right next to your chain, single crochet through the back loop, 
and work that for all stitches. And every so often, just go ahead and count your stitches. Make sure you, you have a total of 11 stitches in your row. It's really easy to get thrown off if you're not paying attention. And you're going to work this repeat over and over until we get to a certain length. And that length is going to be dependent on the size you're making. So I'm working on the small size. So I'm gonna work this repeat until my ribbing measures 20 inches from this bottom starting edge here. Now the next thing you'll want to do is once you get to that point, then you can fasten off if you'd like, or you can leave that ball of yarn active because we are going to continue working on it with the side piece. We're gonna need two of these. So the ribbing matches on the front and the back. So we'll have a ribbed section for each of those pieces. So go ahead and work up your two ribbed sections for the front and the back, just like we've demonstrated here, and follow the measurement in the pattern. That's going to be the size that you're aiming for. And we'll pick back up where we are at the end of one of those. So I'll, I'll demonstrate how you can continue working the body pattern for both the front and the back. So here I am at the end of one of my ribbed pieces. It measures 20 inches, which is the target for my size. And from here, we don't have to fasten off. Now, if you already did because we're working two of these, then that's totally fine. You'll just fasten on in the same corner, this very last stitch where we are. Well, what we want to do is continue working the body. So if you look at it this way, this is going to be the ribbing and the body is gonna build from here up. Now we are going to do a little bit different shaping for the front and the back, but there is a large section that's exactly the same. So again, if you haven't already, go ahead and work up your second ribbing and we're gonna work this next section the same for both the front piece and the back piece. The next thing we want to do to start working on the side is either fasten on right here at that stitch if you did have to cut your yarn, but if not, you can go ahead and just chain one and situate your work so that you can see the side. We're gonna work a row of single crochet evenly all the way down this row. That's gonna build our framework so we can start the pattern of the body. Well, the specific number of stitches that we're gonna work evenly in the side is listed in the pattern and it's dependent on the size you're making. So again, I'm working on the small size. So I'm going to evenly space 67 stitches along the edge. Now you will find that there is a lot of playing around <laughs> that you're gonna have to do in order to get this right. The main goal is that you do space the stitches out as evenly as you possibly can and definitely make sure that you have the number the pattern says. So when you're ready to start off, I just like to find this little opening right here and work my first single crochet there. It's just easiest for me to get my hook into that little space. And then I like to find this guy right here. I'm going to insert my hook underneath that. You don't have to go through the stitch or anything. You can just go directly under it and single crochet. And again, we're keeping track of our count as we go. And I'm gonna keep going. So what I found for me, for this size, that if I work three single crochets in those spaces that I just demonstrated, then I can add a stitch right here. So there's that extra little loop. If I do that, most of the way, I'll I can evenly space 67 stitches. But again, it's gonna be different depending on the size that you're working on. You may have to work it, check where you are and the count that you have. You may have to rip back a couple times. I did, it's perfectly fine. But the main point that I wanna get across here is where I'm working my hook. So we're going in the side of our work. I'm just catching one of the stitches on the side and the other thing that's really important is to be consistent with where you're placing your hook, where you're making the stitches. If you're all over the place, like if you start down here, of course you're gonna have a stitch that looks a little bit longer. And overall that, that will just give you work that looks a little messier 
than than it should. So go ahead and evenly space your single crochet depending on the size you're making. Just refer to your pattern for that specific number. And then we'll pick up with the pattern repeat for the body next. So once you get to the end of that row, you just want to double check and make sure you don't have any scrunching or anything like that. Your stitches should look nice and even. Then we're going to take a stitch marker and just place it in the side of this last stitch. We're going to use that later for reference. And now we'll just go right into the pattern repeat. It's actually really simple for the body before we do any of the shaping. We're going to begin the next row by chaining one and turn our work. And then we want to slip stitch in the first stitch. Now, looking at it from this direction, we can see the first stitch here. I'm going to work my hook under both of the loops and do a slip stitch. So pull up a loop and then pull the loop through the one on your hook. And then we're going to double crochet in the next stitch. Again, catching both of those loops. And that's our repeat. We'll slip stitch into the next stitch. And then double crochet. Slip stitch into the next. And double crochet. So the part that we're looking at right now, the, the part of our work that's facing us as we're working, this is going to be the wrong side of our work. And as you work a few of these stitches, you'll start to see the texture taking shape. So when we work those slip stitches right after the, the tall double crochet, it sort of pushes it out and it creates a nice bumpy texture. So we're going to continue this repeat until we get to the end of the row. When you get to the end of that first row, it doesn't really look like much on this side because this is the wrong side of our work. So we're gonna continue on with the second row of the repeat. We're going to chain two, and when we turn it over, we'll see the nice texture. Our pattern tells us that this chain two doesn't count as a stitch, and that's important to let us know where we're gonna work our first stitch of the next row. So we're going to half double crochet in all stitches for this row. We need to find the first stitch, which is right here. It's the slip stitch from the previous row. And these are always a little bit harder to work your hook into because we naturally work them tighter. But just wiggle your hook into it and make half double crochet. Then the next stitch is a double crochet. We can see that pretty clearly. We'll half double crochet there. And continue that repeat for the entire row. Find your next slip stitch, and it might be easier for you to look for it at the top of the work so you can see the V. And again, you can see even I have a little bit of trouble getting my hook into it. It's totally normal. So what you'll need to do for row number two is work a half double crochet into every stitch. Once you've completed row number two of the body pattern, your work looks like this. You can see that really cool texture that we have going on here. Well, what we wanna do at this point is repeat the last two rows until our work measures a certain length. And again, that number is gonna be found in your pattern and it's based on the size that you're working with. We place this stitch marker at the beginning of our body pattern. So where we had that single crochet row, that's gonna be our measuring point. So. For me, the small size is 14 and a half inches. That's the body until we're gonna start doing the modifications for the armholes and that sort of thing. So this is gonna be my starting point from where I measure. So from here up needs to measure 14 and a half inches. Now I mentioned previously that we're working the front and back simultaneously here. This section that we've covered is 
the same for both the front piece and the back piece. And where it differs is the shaping of the armhole and the neck hole. So we'll cover that later on in the tutorial. What you need to do at this point is finish working both of your pieces that you have going on, working these last two rows repeated until you meet until you meet that certain measurement. And once we return to the video, we'll talk about shaping for the front and the back. We'll do those separately since they are a little bit different. And then we'll move on to the arms. Once you finish crocheting the length of the front and the back of your sweater, you can see I've done that here. Well, we have one more significant repeat for each of these two pieces. So the first thing we need to do is do some shaping for the armholes. And like I said, very much of this pattern is a repeat from the front section to the back section. The only difference is the, the length that we're going to crochet this next repeated section. So we're going to start off on a right side row. So we finished up our last repeat on the wrong side, which is where we worked our bumpy row here, so our slip stitch and double crochet. And now we would pick up on a half double crochet row. So we're not making any major changes here. We're just going to skip a few stitches on this side and over on the other side. So we're going to find our first stitch. Now your working yarn is probably coming out from this direction and we wanna turn our work so that we're looking at it on the right side, but our working yarn is kind of in the way, it's really in the wrong side. So what I like to do is just make a chain that's gonna help me to just get the working yarn in place. So I'm not counting that chain as a stitch, anything like that. I'm just help using that to help me control the working yarn. So we're going to find our first stitch, which should be a slip stitch, and we're gonna slip stitch there. And you wanna make these stitches a little bit loose just to make your life a little easier. And then you'll find the next stitch, which is that nice big open space. We're gonna slip stitch there and repeat that one more time. Slip stitch in the next stitch and slip stitch in the next. So we've made four slip stitches at the beginning of this row. And then we're gonna start our pattern repeat, which is the same repeat for the body. We're gonna chain two, and we're not counting this as a stitch, and we're gonna work a half double crochet in the same stitch. And then we want to make one half double crochet into each stitch until only four remain at the other side. So we're just kind of making little cutouts for the armholes. Now when you get to the end of the row, you're gonna leave your last four stitches unworked. So I'm skipping two bumps basically is a nice visual cue there. And then we're just gonna continue in pattern. So the next row is a wrong side row and that's where we work the slip stitch and the, the double crochet. So we'll chain one and then turn our work. So what you need to do at this point is continue in pattern on the piece that you're working on. You need to decide if this is the front or the back because we're going to do things a little bit differently for each one of those pieces. Now the main difference is the length that we're going to work. So we're gonna start measuring right here. So this is where the armhole starts and for the back of the sweater, we're going to work our body pattern until this section here measures seven and a half inches long for the size that I'm working on, the small. Now for the front, you're going to do the same thing. We're gonna start off with four slip stitches and work evenly in pattern until we get to the end of the row and leave the last four stitches unworked. And then we're gonna work the body pattern until it measures five and a half inches from that starting edge. So there's two pieces that we're working on. The difference between the two is the length. And of course, if you're working on a different size, if you're doing the medium or the large, any of the other sizes available, you need to refer to your pattern in order to get that correct measurement. So that's what I need for you to do at this point. Go ahead and finish crocheting 
the front and the back section, work the armholes on each one of those pieces. And then when we come back, we'll talk about how to shape for the neck. And then later on, we'll learn how to crochet the arm pieces. That wraps up part one of the Big Easy Pullover Crochet Along, sponsored by Yarnspirations. We'll dive into part number two in two days after you've had a chance to work the front and the back sections through the armhole. If you have any questions, I'm here for you. Please don't hesitate to ask. You can leave your questions on the Crochet Along page at BeHookedCrochet.com slash Big Easy Pullover. Just scroll down to the bottom of that page to the comments section and I'll answer any questions you have. On behalf of Yarnspirations and Be Hooked Crochet, thank you for joining me for this exciting crochet along. I'll see you in a couple days.